This year, we've seen pro cyclists wear this, what? do this, and even this. Ah! The horror! But why are pro riders wearing these ridiculous aero bras and strapping objects to their bodies? Well, we're going to explain the theory behind it and head to a wind tunnel to see if it is actually faster than by how much. They don't pay me enough for this shit. Yes, this year we've seen pro riders wearing strange textured base layers or aero bras underneath their clothing, as well as fairings underneath their suits on their chests and even other parts of their body. Now, presumably they're doing this because they believe it makes them faster. But in a bid to find out for ourselves, we've decided to head to the wind tunnel with the help of our unofficial GCN wind tunnel engineer, the bike tailor. Big thanks again to Stephen the Bike Tailor for helping us out with this testing. If you're after a completely custom bike fit or even some wind tunnel testing, he's your man, check out his website. And if you like this kind of content where we're able to test things independently, then make sure you subscribe to GCN Tech because, well, it helps us grow the channel and prove what we do and make more of this stuff in the future. We first tested the aerodynamic base layer, or aero bra, in the wind tunnel. Several different brands make these now, but the story of how they even came to exist and the theory behind how they work is pretty interesting. So engineers know that you can improve the aerodynamics of an object by texturing the surface. And aerodynamically speaking, cylinders are pretty bad shapes, and that's because they have a large wake behind them. They create quite a lot of drag, and your arms are effectively cylinders. As an object moves through the air, it creates, well, what's known as a wake behind it. This is an area of low pressure. Um, it's low pressure compared to the air that's hitting the front of the object, which is a relatively high pressure. And this area of low pressure in the wake actually effectively sucks the object backwards. It's a force that's then acting on the object and creating, well, drag. Now, if you can reduce the size of a wake, well, you can reduce the drag and therefore make it more aerodynamic and faster. Still with me? Good. Texturing the surface trips the boundary layer of airflow from a smooth laminar flow into a turbulent flow. And the advantage of this is that it allows that boundary layer of airflow to stay attached to the object for longer, in this case, my arms. And because it then stays attached for longer, the size of the wake behind the object is made smaller, therefore reducing the drag. So clothing brands then came up with things like this. This is a skin suit that's about six years old now, um, but it has these little silicon chevrons printed on key areas, including the arm. And the idea is that they trip the airflow from lamina to turbulent. Now this was found to be more aerodynamic than a skin suit without any patterns or silicon printing on the arms. Other ones used dots. And not every brand was able to do this or doing this. It was deemed too big an advantage for those that were, and so the UCI, they banned it. Which is weirdly where the aero bra comes in. It's basically a loophole in the UCI rules, which say that you can't have anything printed on the surface of your jersey or skin suit, but it doesn't say anything about the base layer that you wear underneath. So the ribbing and texture on this base layer is designed to sort of press through the skin suit or jersey you wear on top of it, as you can see on my arm here. Question is, does it actually work? To the tunnel. As usual, we had limited time in the tunnel, but we tested the aero bra at different speeds and yaw, and against a baseline of no aero bra. The result, well, at 45 kilometers an hour, I was four and a half percent more aerodynamic with the base layer. At 50 kilometers an hour, not so much, in the region of around 1%. This is kind of pretty interesting. It's something that we often see, that something that might be super fast at 40 kilometers an hour 
isn't necessarily as aero at 50 or 30 kilometers an hour. But what would that equate to in the real world? Well, for me, riding a 10 mile or 16.1 kilometer individual time trial, that'd be 17 seconds safe, which, well, is loads when you consider the winning margin in pro time trials is often much less than that. It's definitely appealing. But what about the aero belly? Well, sticking a camelback down your top isn't a new thing. Frank Schleck famously did it in 2011, which, well, controversially led to a UCI rule change and then banning it. But where the UCI has no jurisdiction in non-UCI events, well, people, people do it. And it's led to triathletes looking, well, ridiculous and time trialists looking even more ridiculous than that. And quite sneakily, some cyclists in UCI events have done things too. So Remco of Ennepool in the World Championships time trial, he had his radio stuffed down the front of his chest with some rather sneaky additional padding to help shape it and uh, presumably improve his aerodynamics. The question is though, does it actually work? And if so, by how much? Back to the tunnel. We decided to test both a cylindrical bottle, or bidon if you're French or pretentious, and a camelback, with skin suits being so tight they barely fit inside of it. Now the round bottle didn't appear to make much difference, although it also didn't appear to be any slower, around 1% more aerodynamic. However, the camelback resulted in a significant saving, around 3%. We also observed chest fairings gave a slightly greater saving at yaw too. But what does that equate to in the real world? Well, sticking with our 10 mile or 16.1 kilometer time trial example, I would stand to save around nine to 10 seconds if I rode with my belly. Um, and the reason for this is it's theorized that it helps close the void um, and the gap between your thighs and your chest and therefore help make you a bit more aerodynamic. But it's always worth bearing in mind that this is system dependent. Some riders will stand to gain more or less from this, depending on the rider. So if I think of the most aerodynamic riders in the world, people like Remco Evenepoel or Dan Bigham, they already ride with a position where there is a very small gap between their thighs and their chest. So perhaps they would stand to gain less from something such as this. Just always remember, aerodynamics is system dependent. So it probably will make you faster, but uh, well, just bear in mind that your post-event photos probably aren't gonna be the most flattering. Right, as for other body fairings that we've seen people use on things like their arms and their lower legs, you can assume that there is probably a significant aerodynamic benefit to doing this. And that's because of the science. You're effectively taking a cylinder once again, but rather than just texturing the surface, you're making it more aerodynamic and reducing the size of the wake behind it by changing its whole shape into something more aerofoil shaped. And aerofoils exhibit significantly less drag than a cylinder, and that's why you see these teardrop shapes all over the place on bikes and tubes everywhere. Within time trials, at least, it would appear that this is a loophole that's probably going to get closed next year. But what do you think about the results of our experiments? Let us know in the comments. Also, let us know if there's anyone who would ride on your group ride with this. You can name them and shame them below. And uh, also, big thanks to Bike Taylor for helping us with the experiments. And let us know in the comments what you'd like to see us test in the future. I'm gonna go now. Love you. Bye.